So, I made, at least I tried, making the epic zombie attack system. So, without further ado, let's go into it. You're probably wondering what a zombie attack system is. And that's actually a good question. And I can't answer good questions. <laughs> so yeah. Well, never mind. I just think I will show you how it works and then you can make a name for it yourself. The model is linked down in the description. Open the Weavish tab. Click on Toolbox to open the Toolbox. Click on Inventory. Then it should be here in Inventory. Go to the Explorer and go ahead and open up. There are only two important parts. The model for the server storage and the model for the server script service. There is also an empty code, you can just go ahead and delete it. Just nonsense from me. Now place the two models in their places and ungroup them. Now click on output. We are using the output to test the game and see when the zombies spawn and attack you. The idea is that each second minute there is a chance for that zombies will spawn in a wraith and attack you. The reason we use the output is that we can see when they not spawn and when they spawn. And here we can see no attack this time. This means that the dice has fallen and they didn't spawn this time. But now they spawn and that's because I have set the time between dice rolls shorter to test it. But the code is fully customizable so you can set the time to whatever you want and much more. So stick around to see what you want to customize to make your game better with this code. Before we go deeper into the zombie attack system and learn how to customize it fully, if you appreciate the system or the video, then only if then, then please consider giving this video a thumbs up so I know you appreciate the system. And now to part 2 of the video, customization. I'm no programmer, but I will still try to explain this the best way possible. Can you see? Wait 10 seconds. It determines when there is a chance that a zombie attack might come. When the time has passed and there is a chance that the zombie attack will occur, the chance of it occurring is it determined with this code snippet. I'm not quite sure what this is, but it's like it's run to 100 and this is like if it's less than 50 then the attack will occur and you can change that 50 to 20 or 75 or something. Once the zombie attack has been selected, three things can happen. So it rolls again the dice with 100 sides. If it's under 25, 10 to 15 zombies will spawn. If it's under 40, then 6 to 9 zombies will spawn, and if anything else, so 35% chance, they will only spawn 2 to 5 zombies. So, now we know how we change when the zombies have the chance to spawn, and also how big the chances should be, and also how many should spawn, and what the chances are for that. But there is the folder wave that determines which zombie should spawn. So at that way you for example can insert better and epic zombies and then find out what the chances are for them to spawn. It's like you can set uh, different zombies in and stuff. It's quite cool. So we, here we have the wave and under that there are these folders and under that there are the zombies we can insert and just choose the zombies you want and put them in there and the folders has a certain rarity for each zombie and for each time a zombie should spawn they go through this process that we can see here and what is it we have here you might ask it's like before 1 to 100 dice throw if they were 5 or under they will choose a random zombie within the folder mutated exotic rarity 
And yeah, that's right, you can have multiple different zombies in one folder. So like you want to have five different exotic zombies, no problem, you can do it. Just put them in the same folder. If you throw 15 or lower, minimum 6, then they will spawn an acupolytic. Apocalyptic. So they will spawn a apocalyptic zombie. If under 30, then an uncommon, and if anything else, then common. And yeah, I'm just reading the code. But hope uh, that's right, though. Can you see these numbers 100, 100, 100, and 100? You must change these numbers if you want to change the radius which the zombies must spawn in relation to the player, if that makes sense. So basically, just the spawn radius. But that's only the xx. If you want to change the y or whatever that is, uh, change the zero. The last thing on our list is when the zombies die, and we don't want them to die after 15 seconds. So just change the 15 to whatever you like. Remember, it's seconds. The last thing to note is that you surely want to implement your own zombies. Which means that you take one from the toolbox or make your own. This will just cause a problem. The reason to this problem is that the script relies on primary parts in the model of zombies to teleport them or spawn them in the radius of the player. Unfortunately, it's extremely easy to make a primary part, so I'll just show you how. Select the zombie and on the properties you find the primary part, click on it and go down to the torso and click on the torso. Then you should see that the primary part is set to torso. Congrats bro, you have now finished the extreme boring tutorial to the epic. Zombie